You've likely seen his work around town. Police say a local graffiti artist has been at it for years. And police say a CMU student is responsible for graffiti at nearly 60 different locations in the city of East End. The graffiti task force says catching up with local taggers is only a matter of time. I've been drawing graffiti my whole life. I've been doing art my whole life. I've always been interested and invested in it. I grew up in the southwest side of Chicago, so I was always surrounded by graffiti and a lot of like Latino graffiti. There's a Mexican American community. So there's gang graffiti too. Um, and I was right near like the train yards and like the factories and all that. So when I would go back to the yards, I would see graffiti. I would see like all these abandoned buildings with graffiti in them and from there, I just kind of get it, started getting more and more invested in drawing and pursuing any kind of art. And around high school is when I started to take graffiti and art a little bit more seriously. The, the two never really overlapped a whole lot, but the intensity of graffiti and art were like equally there at the same time. Eventually, that led to me getting a scholarship to go to CMU for fine art. I came to Pittsburgh with uh, full force wanting to become an artist and also wanting to pursue graffiti more. And unfortunately, that's what led to my downfall as being Pittsburgh's number one most wanted graffiti artist. When you're walking the same routes all the time, I mean, you've already tagged on all the stuff in your same routes. You have to find more spaces. I'm Jerome, uh, 32 years old. Um, I moved to Pittsburgh in 2011 to become a photographer and I ended up being a graffiti writer and a graphic designer and illustrator. I was expecting to do a lot more with photography, even ended up going to the Art Institute and all I ended up doing was tagging all over the city. We're just trying to take our creative energy and all our, I guess, energy that some people might think of as illegal and putting it towards, I guess, some more, uh, some more community engaging outlets and trying to just make the most of everything we've got. We've gotten kind of screwed over with our whole legal situation, but we've also made a name for ourselves. It's It's been rough, but we're here to make things better. I, I remember being home at my new apartment and my former roommate calls me and he's like, yo man, the task force was just at our at my apartment and they were looking for you. Like I, I would say like a month later, I was at CMU on campus and they show up and the campus police are looking for me. So they take me into the local police station for like interrogation. And then they're like, all right, let's just cut to it. And they pull out my backpack that had been stolen my freshman year. And this was like three years later, a staff member at CMU had actually confiscated your backpack and held on to it for three years and waited for us to be reinstated and brought the evidence to us. Obviously the harshest parts of my sentencing was house arrest. Uh, that was one year sentencing, but I still did my best to, to still put on art shows and do murals and do everything I could despite being on house arrest. The letters CHU are prominent in the graffiti on this building in the 2700 block of Penn Avenue in the Strip District. They're also frequently seen in the area of Lawrenceville around Butler Street, from buildings to walls to bus shelters. They are listed as evidence against 30-year-old Jerome Charles, who was arrested today and charged with more than $46,000 worth of graffiti vandalism over five years. So one morning I was sitting at home and I heard my dog barking, so I went to go see who was at the door. And there was some guy who I didn't know who said, are you Jerome Charles? I'm like still observing him and I look and I see like a necklace that he's wearing and I'm like, oh, that's what cops always wear when they put their badges on on TV. He presented me with a search warrant um, and at the very top of the warrant, it, it read out the reason. It said that at this date, at this time, the actor Jerome Charles was seen um, spray painting a white box truck in Troy Hill and then getting into a Jeep. 
like with the license plate this and driving away. And uh, those 65 counts at the time time ended up being ended up totaling $47,000 uh, in damages. So what they ended up doing was telling me that uh, I had to turn myself in for processing and that I was, I was to go before the judge. He set my bail at $100,000. If you see a toddler writing on the walls, instead of spanking his hand, you give him something else to write on. You, you point him in the direction of the paper and stuff and say, hey, do it over here. So instead of punishing him for trying to be creative and expressing something, you give him another outlet. So that's essentially what's happened with us, is that we were wilding out as toddlers, like painting on the walls and shit. And the city forced us, <laughs> we didn't get spanked, but and that was sort of the opportunity to like, all right, fine, if I can't do it here, then I guess I'll do it on this canvas. <laughs>